Okay, welcome to the channel. I'm going to be mixing today using uh, Softube Console 1 and Avid Artist Mix Control Services. Uh, it's going to be a little tutorial. I'm basically mixing a, a song from top to bottom today, so you'll get to see every single thing that I do. Um, I didn't get to a place at the end of it where I thought it's finished product, but I at least got the drums and bass kind of more tight and locked in and um, so now the first thing I'm, I'm doing drums so I'm, I'm mixing the drums so I've got all the drums are soloed and this is what the beat's gonna so now we're bringing it down to just the kick trying to dial in the kick sound uh, see I have all these instruments kick snare hat floor tom overhead these are all running through Superior Drummer, so this is not a real drummer playing. <laughs> um, I program all these, uh, they have these kind of pre-played loops and then you can dial them up or down to where you want to do it. And this happened to just be a, uh, actually wrote this song based on a preset beat like 10 years ago or something, 2011. Anyways, so I'm, I'm still messing around. I promise that the drum sound gets better. When I'm mixing, I'm just trying out different things a lot of the time. If you like this content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Give me a like down there. I'd appreciate it. I'm trying to get this channel to a thousand for the algorithm, man. So yeah, um, getting the drum bus. I finally decided to just set it at zero and then start from there. And now here's where I really start to dial in. You'll know it's gonna get for real when the console when the console one comes up. Uh, this is an amazing piece of technology, and I would highly encourage you to look it up and comment on it below. Softube console one, it, it makes the workflow so quick. So I'm putting a low cut filter here, so I'm cutting anything below 30 hertz. You can see on the left side of the screen there it says 29 hertz. So that's just any rumbling. I mean. These are samples for this drum kit, so I don't really have to mix it too hard because they're pretty awesome already sounds, but I'm trying to make them sound a little bit more unique than just the out of the box cookie cutter. Um, so the, yeah, continuing to work on the kick drum here. And I got a little compression on it, I think. I missed, I missed that, but I, I see the compression in the meter there. Yeah, it looks like I did put some on there. Just doing about five, three, four decibels right there on the compressor. And um, now I'm messing with the drive and the character. That's a great feature of this. Uh, it behaves kind of like a gain on the SSL console. I don't know. It just, just makes it sound like when you overdrive an SSL console, gives it some character. Uh, now I'm looking for a frequency that I don't like. for some reason I just I was trying to and I wanted a little, a little deeper sound just a little bit like half a DB 1 DB so I'm, I'm cutting half a DB at 50 kilohertz and raising 1 kilo, one, dis, 1 DB at 44 hertz and rolling off all the way at 30 so I don't know if it makes that much of a difference now I'm bringing the snare in, which for the most of this song is kind of this kind of side stick kind of sound. I think it hits the snare a few times, but um, yeah, kind of a thin sound at first. So I was trying to thicken that sound up, I think. So here's, we're back in the console one. I, lo I love this thing. It's so seamless. Only thing is I wish that Avid made it um, integrate better. So the same thing I'm rolling off below 30 hertz. I was just messing around. I just wanted to see what it sounded like. Um, yeah. Okay. So 
So yeah, hit me up in the comments below what you think about this kind of content. I've been taking a break from YouTube for a while and I want to get back to doing some of my own stuff and I figured maybe I can like share what I'm working on. It's kind of hard to talk and do it at the same time. <laughs> um, here I'm messing with the compressor a little and I think it. I was able to thicken up this, tighten up the sound. I don't know how you want to describe it. Now I'm putting some drive on it. It's a really nice knob that you can just drive the console on like an SSL console. That's just pretty sweet. Sounds pretty good. And there's that little snare accent or whatever. Okay, now I'm bringing in uh, the overheads. And I'm doing this using this Avid Artist Mix, which is a great control service, it lets you hit the faders. I'm not actually using the mouse for most of the session, and that's how I'm able to work so fast, because I can turn the knobs on the compressor and then go down to the fader, and then I can bank over and back and forth, and it's really just a great workflow. Once, it, once you get the software open, it takes about 10 minutes to get the damn software open. Once you get everything plugged in right, um, it's great. So here, again, this is standard. I'm just going to roll off 30 on this overhead. I experimented with some heavy compression there. I didn't like it. I wanted a more natural kind of clean sound. So I just put like a touch of compression on the overheads. Yeah, for mixing, it's like spend most of the time on the drums and bass, even when they're programmed drums. It's crazy. And a drummer's hit me up what you think about SD3 and the drummer's role in the band nowadays, the digital era. So I'm messing with the compressor some more and I end up not doing that. Yeah. That. Sometimes you gotta try ideas to see that. It's like painting, you're painting with sound. <clears throat> put in some character on there. Oh. Did that make it onto the video? Ryan was asking me what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, so bringing the hi-hat in now, I guess this ha a little too much. I always try to bring the volume fader up first before I dial in the other things. I find you can usually just from volume alone you can get a good balance and then just tweak from there. You know, then look for those treble frequencies or compression points or whatever you're doing. Rolling off. So I'm low cutting a little higher on this because I don't need to hear low end information in the hi hat. You can see it's all the information is almost all the way on the far right. So I'm just uh, trying to get it to blend into the kit. You know, I'm getting ideas to get you to get your head nodding, you know. If by the end of the session you're kind of like nodding your head and you're, you're getting into it, then you took it from a place where you know, the mix was sounding kind of static to maybe now it's bumping. It's, you know, that's the whole point. It's music, right? Have us feel some emotions and fun. It's not all. I know we get, we get, sometimes we get caught up in the technical aspects of production and performance, but at the end of the day, it sh this should be fun. So I'm trying to bring those tom drums in. <clears throat> I was getting some like weird ring that I didn't like, but I, I guess I realized that's just how tom drums sound. <laughs> um, you're going to see me try to pull the frequency out pretty unsuccessfully. I finally just gave up on it. Did the, just said whatever. I think I just uh, rolled the faders down a little so that the, the tom sit a little back in the mix. And... By the way, I, I'm not doing any reverb or delay or effects on this session. That's why I said I, I didn't bring this session to completion of like a fully produced professional mix song. 
like I would do for you. And if you're interested, hit me up. If you want me to mix your stuff, I will um, for a fee. Email me. And um, yeah, so trying to get this tom drum to this is a rack tom. It's a pretty repetitive drum beat, this one. But you'll see. It fits the song. It ends up working. <clears throat> and so now I'm trying to take the same ringing out of the floor toms. And I think they might have been ringing in different spots, if I remember. Yeah, they're, that one I found pretty. I didn't like that. It's a little bit too much. Wanted it tighter. The song is more of like a mix between R&B, pop, kind of indie, folk, pop, R&B kind of vibe. <clears throat> so, compression, a few dB. You'll see a theme throughout. I kind of just do the same thing for every instrument, just kind of find out wh where it needs to sound a little better and tweak a few things here and there, nothing too drastic. And then all together, those little tweaks take the mix from a place where it was kind of boring to a place where it's more exciting. I think we're gonna open it up with some instruments here. I think the drums were pretty bumping. We're gonna put some shaker. Uh oh, we still have a lot more percussion now. We have shaker, tambourine, uh, three separate tracks of me snapping my fingers, <laughs> and acoustic guitars, bass, and we'll get into all the pianos and all that vocals later. Let's see what happened. I accidentally muted the bus. Okay. So we got our beat. Okay. And now we have our glorious shaker. Shake me. Shake away. I love that shaker. It's a minor. I just like soft shakers. I don't like the hard sounding shakers. I think the the sound you get for percussion in your track is so unique to the instrument. I have different like shakers and tambourines for different vibes and different songs that I use and with different mics too. You can see in the notes I use a RE20 with a red soft shaker and a minor single row steel tambourine. You know, it's like real specific sounds. That I like to get with some of them because also part of that is because I'm using program drums so I'm yeah bringing in oh we weren't done with the drums sorry okay so this is a room drum this is the ambient this is like a room mic uh, so it's, I decided to do a crazy compression on this and then just put a little bit in so it gives it a little bit of space and a little bit of trashiness but like you don't even almost notice it like pepper, you know, in your, you know, like, like spicy pepper in your, I don't know, your tamale or your Bloody Mary. I don't know what you put peppers in. <laughs> so it's a lot of compressions, more than I, you, I would put. I forgot where I learned that trick. So that sounds a little more like a room. Now we have a shaker too. And the shaker is a little, it was annoying me a little bit. Needed to do something, I don't know, low cut on it. Yeah, I think I was getting some rumble in the mic there. That's why I was getting annoyed. So I just cut that out, I cut it. Actually, it sounds way better now. So that's what I did, yeah. Come on, <laughs> come on, it, it, it's okay, it's okay, you can do it, you can do it. Just watching myself in replay mode, cutting at 460 there. It's funny how music's so mathematical sometimes. So now I'm gonna pull out, I'm just gonna do a high frequency shelf about 
almost a decibel at 8K, just a shelf, to give more, uh, more air to the shaker. Now it's not annoying me. Now it sounds good. Now here's the tambourine. I decided, well, let me roll off, you know, look, look how much of the information is in the high frequency spectrum. It's all there. So I roll off at 500 again. Tambourine is a good, uh, you know, uh, baseline for your high frequencies in your track. And now we got the finger snaps, so we're getting the full percussion. So we've got the drums going, we got the percussion going. Uh, experimented rolling off there. I think I decided to do it because they're finger snaps. We don't. I don't know why I was getting a lot of rumble in the mic on some of these. I don't know. You know I'm recording these in my you know converted bedroom studio. Studio. There's a lot of treatment, but um, you know on the walls, but still get some rumbles. So that way we cut all these unnecessary frequencies they don't interfere that way we can separate that a little from the bass or the kick drum or the guitar or whatever that's in the low end snapping it up snapple so moving on with the mix yeah, I remember doing that, just going through the track for like 20 minutes, just snap, snap, snap. <laughs> okay, we're going to bring in some bass. We've got a good groove going on with some percussion, some snapping, some... And here's the, the bass. I had an EQ and a, a, a compressor plug-in, different from the console one. You see that I put the console one on every track by default. That way I don't have to ever mess around with plugins. I just play, I just use the console one for everything. But sometimes I like to use other plugins. And I, I actually just got such a fat bass sound with this compressor that I, at the end I, I, I decided to leave it. I mean, he could see me here experimenting around with different, uh, different um, orders of plugins. And I think at the end I used all three. I used it compression off the soft tube, which you see me doing here, and uh, also that 76 compressor, and that EQ curve I drew, which is, I had dialed it in, I don't know, but the bass just sounded good to me that way. It's a big part of this track. And I did play everything on these tracks, just so you know, it's my stuff, so, uh, you know. I'm not perfect on this stuff. I'm just showing you my journey and whatnot. So I did a low cut, some compression, just messed around in the console one. And now I'm just, messing. I think this is what I went with in the end with all three. I am gonna go in in the 76 in a minute, I think, and, and mess around, yeah, here with the outputs and the inputs, just to dial it in a little tighter. Here we go. I promise, I promise the track gets a lot more exciting. <laughs> That's what mixing is, though. just listening to the same song for 40 minutes, you know? <laughs> Oops. Okay. So, going back to the bass. Yeah, I couldn't make up my mind what to do. I think at one point the bass was getting a little too clicky, and I wanted it, yeah, here, a little fatter, yeah. No. Now it's too clicky, it's too like womp, 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 womp. It's like too pronounced staccatos or whatever. I wanted it to be fatter. It gets there. You know, and when I do this, you know, I'm, I'm listening on, on speakers, you know. I'm using Yamaha, I think HS7 or something like that. 
their six and a half inch speakers. There's the acoustic guitars. More on those later. See the track up? I told you, it's gonna be jamming in a minute. Bass is almost there, just keep tweaking those compressor knobs. Just I think that's where I left it. Kind of glued together. And there's no, you know, this is still, we're gonna put reverbs and delays and, and, and bus, you know, bus compression in. And we're gonna do more at the end, you know, not in this video, we'll have a sequel to this video. Um, if you like this kind of content, let me know that I should do more of it. You know, should I do more content like this? Let me know in the comments. Hit me with the like and subscribe. Help me with the algo. I'm trying to get to 1K. 1K sub subs. Let me monetize. Put a lot of work in YouTube. Let me get some money back, baby. Okay. Uh, we're still dialing in that bass. I wanted to go in surgically again with the console one. Yeah, that, that little clicking thing or whatever. I wanted to just find that and just tamp that down a little half a db these are all small changes you know you know i'm doing like less than 2 db of compression sometimes you know now i'm bringing back in some some interests in other instruments All my music's over at Spotify if you'd like to listen to it. Uh, this one will be up there when it's done. It's not there now, but uh, check back later and check Spotify now for some other things I've done. If you like, if you like this, you like those probably. Okay, we're moving on to, we got the bass, we got the drums. Now we're dialing in some piano. And I ended up just putting a little compression on this. And there's about three or four or five pianos on this track, so trying to get them to all blend together was a trick, and I think I got it in the end. We got that organ on there. Yep, so we got the, just the, those, you know, half notes or whole notes or whatever on the pianos, you know. I'm just, it takes me a while to experimenting. I'm, I'm just experimenting trying to get the, the blend of the pianos to, at this point in the mix, I still don't know what information is. You know, I, I could play these tracks like a long time ago. <laughs> I don't remember what I played. But they all fit together like, you know. And we have some bells there. Every track is there for a reason. It's like a painting, you know, every little color. You have your greens and your blues and your oranges. It all fits together. Yeah, it's not quite there yet. It's a little imbalanced still. So I had to zoom out. Let's zoom out. That's what I'm doing here. We'll zoom out. Let's hear the rest of the whole mix. Let's switch the spot, zoom out. You know, this mix is their journey. You know, that's as much as part of the art as the rest of the process. Yeah, so the, the pianos are way too hot right now. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll get there. <laughs> ah, it's like, you just want to be able to like grab yourself on the shoulder and say, look, this is what you needed to do. Okay, so I took the guitars just out because I was like, it's too much. Let me go back to like drums, bass, and let me, let me 
now fit the piano into the drums and bass. That's what's gonna feature. So that's what I did. So then now we're gonna pull up the piano on the console one. And everything's gonna build around those three, the drums, the bass, and the piano. And then I'll fit the guitars and the other pianos around, around that section. So I got, yeah. And I dialed in some compression and I thought just a little bit of compression on this piano really helped it stand out. So it's already a good vibe here. And now I'm bringing in the uh, Rhodes piano. And I was experimenting with this low cut. I just wanted to see. But I decided just leave it at 80. Now I'm soloing on the pianos just to blend them a little deeper. And I have this Wurlitzer that's playing a little melody line, little accent notes. And so I, the idea was to try to make them sound like one thick piano altogether, like kind of a little wall of sound, like Phil Spector, a la Phil Spector. Though he'd probably have like 30 pianos. <laughs> Okay. It's getting, getting there, it's sounding better than it was. I think next I had to bring in the bells. Still checking. Trying to get those three main pianos to blend. And really, like, you won't hear this in the track. Like, your ear won't hear that. There's too many things going on once I bring all the other 10 instruments in. But, like, you'll feel it. Like, this idea. You'll, you'll feel when things are off or when things are, like, feeling good. Yeah. So here's the bells. And these are all, these keyboard sounds are off the Nord Electro 3. Even these, like, kind of glockenspiel sounding bells. Amazing examples. Ten-year-old keyboard, but you know, technology is amazing. I need to get a, a newer Nord uh, nowadays. I swear, I gotta save up. They're so expensive. Those four or five thousand dollars. Like, gosh, half that price maybe. Okay, back to the mix. So we're putting some compression on these bells uh, because we just want them to cut through a little bit more in the mix. The bells and the tambourine are kind of like setting the pace for the high frequencies. You know? Okay. Getting a good blend going. What's happening now? Oh! <laughs> There was just something about the shaker that was just pissing me off. I don't know, it was just like a little too loud. And I don't, maybe you've noticed that too, but I came in and did something else. I dialed in on some frequency that was pissing me off and <laughs> said, no frequency, you shall go down. Okay. I guess I took off a couple dBs at, two kilohertz. I don't know what happened with the shaker on this track. It's just, there's so much going on in the track that it's, it's hard to find room for everything. I might honestly pull that shaker up on the next session. I, I might have to just dial it in a little. That, that's, that's, like I said, it's a process, it's a journey. Like you start out with this mix and you just kind of Slap it around this way and that way until you get it how you like. It's like baking a cake, you know, it's never, you never do it the same twice. It's never perfect. It's always each, each time you do it is a unique cake. Getting too metaphorical. This is a long video. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with it. Appreciate it. Hit me in the comments below with a like, subscribe, support the channel. 
So we got this organ, taking it to church, putting a little compression, just a little kiss of compression, maybe a dB. It's already pretty compressed sounding. And it's just kind of the glue for this track. It gives a good vibe. So now I've just got the keyboards all soloed and I just want to hear that whole section. See, mixing is kind of like conducting. You, you need to hear all the trumpets and then you need to hear all the violins. And you know, you kind of got to do the same thing when you mix. You hear each section, the drums, guitars, keyboards, vocals, bass. You need to like see each section and, and then it all blends together in the whole. it out. I think I think I got a balance here with the pianos and I'm gonna bring in some I think lead guitar if I remember now. Lead vocal? Oh boy. I don't wanna hear that. <laughs> on a Gibson jumbo, which I love. I love that guitar. It just records so well. The jump, the large size of the guitar. Just gonna roll off at about 80. Cause I felt like it was a little too, a little too muddy down there. It was competing with other things. Cause it's such a big body. It actually has a lot of bass in the guitar when you play it live, so. That gets it to blend a little better. A little compression, about three dBs. So there's two guitars going. You're hearing all my mistakes now. <laughs> this is the second guitar. There was some frequency going on there. This one had a capo on it because of the way the capo was on. Was trying to fix it in the mix. Can't always do it, but you can try. Trying to make it sound like one big guitar. A 12-string guitar would have been a great choice for this, but I don't. I don't have one lying around, so the next best thing and recorded two kind of complementary guitar tracks. That goes well with the organ too. Back to the acoustic guitars. Now we're just trying to dial them in a little tighter. I love this Avid Artist mix. It, it, it makes it hands-free. So here's the guitar solo. This is no amp, using a Sans amp pedal, GT2, and a Telecaster, and a bunch of other pedals. And I just, I mess around to get a sound. I'm using the Deluxe Memory Man for the delay sound, I love it. I think I wrote it in the notes. I try to write my pedal chains in the notes and stuff. But we're, we're jamming by now, now that you're hearing the track almost fully. I hope you're nodding your head by now. <laughs> That's the goal. But you see, the little differences can lead to a big difference in the whole. Lead guitar is a little hot. I'm putting some compression on it. I think I should dial it back a little. Yeah. And I think once I put reverb and other effects on all these tracks, it will be that will. It won't be so stark, the reverb and delay on that guitar won't be so different because the other thing will have reverb too. This is the breakdown section of the song. You're not hearing all the sections of the song, obviously. 
when I mix, I try to like pick a set, pick the most busy, the busiest section, and and then get that to bump, and then come back and fine tune all the breakdowns and intros. So. What are we doing here? Ah, okay. This is a quick tip. You hold down Alt. Well, I messed up, but I wanted to copy the settings from one guitar over to the other. So you hold Alt and you drag the plug in, and then it copies it for you. That way, I don't have to read mix you know these are this basically just the back half of the solo was on a second track because i wanted to do something a little different with the effects later oh mixing so joy of mixing <laughs> i don't know why this is always the most boring part for me but <laughs> hope you find it interesting i like the part where you record and perform but fun coming up with the stuff. This is the hard part, blend it all together and mark it. Okay, coming back to that bumping section, and okay, I guess I didn't like, I thought the guitars were a little too loud, I think. So I want them to sit back a little, a little quieter. Now I want to hear it with some other instruments. Used at this part. I don't know what happened. I was, at this point, I think I was just lost. Sometimes you just got to get lost in the mix to find it. It's almost, we're almost at the, at the completion. We almost got the, you know, it's close when you start getting lost like this. Trying to find the right vibe for those acoustic guitars. They're so big and sounding. You know? And in this song, it's more like a complementary instrument. It's more of a keyboard driven. Tune. Coming back to the solo, seeing how that plays off the acoustic. Seems like a better balance now. Now, trying to, try. Just still looking for the level on these guitars, these electric guitars. Yeah, you can see the, in the notes it's an OD3 sand zamp. Like I list the pedal chain. So if you wanted to recreate that sound, you could try to dial it back in. But I like to get my guitars right like the first time. Wish I could say the same about the other instruments. <laughs> Here's some vocals for you. Maybe it's not Still rough. Still, Still need. I didn't mix the vocals this session. I just was trying to get the instrumental to, to, to bump, come back and do vocals and effects and stuff later. Yeah, I think we got the track to a pretty good groove here. I guess I'll play it for you. Maybe it's now or never. 
we're gonna be together let's be honest with ourselves we've been here much too long singing the same old sorry song stringing our hearts along down and yeah i'll have to remix these a lot but and like it's way too low here right had to bump it up right so and there's a bv too yeah it'll be good i'll i'll, I'll mix them next time Got to get some effects on everything. I think we're almost there on this song, you know. A little more mixing, a little mastering. And dump it on Distro Kid, put it out on Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, whatever. I think that's where I left it with this one, so check back for the next session. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it. My name's Yusuf.